Hey, it's Thursday. Oh man, we talked about how yesterday we were going to the SpaceX launch, obviously. We'll talk about that in a second, the hot new stuff. We've got that going on. I'm Brett. We're gonna go through some not who's today. I'm glad that you're here with us. And I'm glad that we have a sponsor for today's video. So let's talk about them. Today's video is brought to you by manscaped.com. Listen, my friends, you need to take care of your meat kiwis, your kangaroo apples. You gotta take care of the family jewels, which is why Manscaped has created the world's first all-in-one manscaping kit that makes manscaping safe, easy. You don't want anything endangering your meat and two veg. So they have come out with the perfect tools for your crown jewels. And I've been one of the first to receive the new Lawnmower 3.0 water resistant body trimmer. The only trimmer market made with advanced skin safe technology, which reduces nicks and cuts from manscaping accidents. My friends, you don't want your stones getting damaged, okay? They're exposed. You don't want your stones ripped open, your berries. You don't want nicks and cuts on your devil face. You gotta keep them right, which is why it's got a powerful 7,000 RPM motor with the quiet stroke technology, but the skin safe technology makes sure there's no rips. You also got a built-in LED light to make it so that you can see down in the darkness, the cave of many wonders with the Agrabah jewels. Gotta keep it, gotta keep it clean, friends. So when you use our link in the video description, you get the new Lawnmower 3.0 water resistant trimmer, plus all the great add-ons when you buy the perfect package 3.0 essential kit, which gives you the ball deodorant and the ball toner that comes with it. Plus for a limited time, you get two free gifts, the shed travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. And when you purchase the new Perfect Package 3.0 kit online at manscaped.com, you'll also get a replacement blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. So you can get 20% off at manscaped.com by going to the link in the video description, plus free shipping and using the promo code UFD Tech. Easy peasy. Go to the link in the video description, promo code UFD Tech, save your money with 20% off, but then also save your bits. Save your kiwis. All right, that's enough about your skin wrinkles. Let's talk about the wrinkle in the plan of Sony, which is the PS5 launch, because it does look like Sony is indeed going to be having an event on June 3rd to give us more details, finally. That's what we've been waiting for. The original rumor actually was that this was gonna take place in a week exactly on June 4th, but now Bloomberg and several other articles are corroborating the fact that Sony will have a state of play on June 3rd to give us some exclusive looks at some PS5 exclusives. However, as much as we may want it to be a PS5 breakdown, likely that will not happen. They're not planning on revealing every essential detail on the console during the event, but more like it's just going to be the games, which if you're following along with me, I want God of War 2 announced. I want Horizon Zero Dawn 2 announced. I want Jack 4 announced. What other games do I want, Reese? I'll take a Grand Turismo 7, thank you. Catlin, what PlayStation 5 game do you want announced? Near three, add that to the list. Give me a Final Fantasy 16 as well. I'll take that on the order. What do you want? Reese, what do you want? We're at the drive-thru, give me your order. <laughs> Last of Us Part 3, Zombie Edition. Persona 6, that's my order, I'm sticking to it. I'll have two number nines. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, but done in UE5. Yes. That's my order. What's your order for PlayStation 5 exclusives? What do you want coming out? Let me know down below in the comments. But while we're talking about exclusives, it looks like GeForce Now is gonna get more exclusive, less exclusive, I don't know. It looks like Nvidia has given up on their original strategy for GeForce Now, which was, we're just gonna add games and then get developers mad at us and then they can pull out if they want. Well, now they're gonna have an opt-in program starting on May 31st. Some games will be removed if the developers and publishers haven't opted into GeForce Now and those that have, they will remain on the platform. NVIDIA publishing the list of the games and publishers and developers that have decided to stay on and then they have a list of the games that will no longer be available because the game publishers decided not to opt in. Of them, the ones that bother me the most are Clicker Heroes 1 and 2, Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realm, and Russian Fishing 4. In case you can't tell, I'm into idol games. Why is that funny to you, Reese? Huh? Well, I'm not rushing to get to the next article, but let's do it anyways, which is about NVIDIA launching the GeForce, not GeForce, Quadro Experience, which is basically GeForce Experience, but for Quadro cards, for professionals. It's a professional thing, just like what we're doing here at UFD Tech. Isn't that right, Reese? I'm laughing at my Russian fishing four. How dare you? And how dare Intel? Apparently, turns out, they have a couple different versions of the new i5-10 series that they've been launched. The i5-6 cores, 
appear to come in two different varieties. They come in the Q0 and the G1 varieties. Turns out the Q0 is the cut down version of the 10900K. So it's a 10 core with just six cores that are the, like it's a bin version of the actual Comet Lake chip. But then the G1 version is actually basically an i7-8700 turned into an i5 in the latest generation. So the differences here are one actually has soldered thermal interface material, which would be the Q0. And then there's one that isn't soldered at all, which would be the G1. What this will actually mean, probably not a whole lot, especially since Intel did only make it for the i5-10400, 10500, and 10600, but not for the overclockable version. So the one that you're gonna get the best performance out of would still be the one that is the cut down 10 core based on the new process, as opposed to something else. However, that doesn't mean you can't get more out of the i5s that aren't overclockable because we've talked about previously that ASRock has their upcoming BFB, which is Base Frequency Boost Program, which allows you to up the TDP of the chip to get a faster frequency. Well, ASUS has announced their program and it's called ASUS APE. They're not monkeying around here. APE standing for ASUS Performance Enhancement, which is basically just that it's going to increase the TDP allowed and allow it to go faster based on that up to 210 watts on the highest end motherboard they'll offer this on, which is the B460F ROG Strix Gaming. So that will exist. Well, the silver back lining in all of this is that you can, sorry, that was, that was bad, that was bad, is that you can get faster CPUs and you don't have to buy a K-series chip, but you know, if you cared about overclocking with not having to buy special processors, you probably already switched over to AMD, just saying. And switching over to AMD is what a lot of people did, which is why a lot of people were upset when AMD announced that you couldn't use B450s for Zen 3. Well, AMD obviously reneged on the thing that they said that they were gonna do and then they didn't do and then they reneged on that. Well, MSI came out and said, hey, all of our motherboards, all of our 400 series motherboards that have a 16 megabyte ROM will be totally fine. Like regardless of what AMD is doing, it'll be okay. The max motherboards have 32 megabytes and they'll also be totally fine. If you have an MSI 400 series motherboards, they want you to know, baby, it's gonna be all right. You can keep, you can keep your board and upgrade your chip. MSI is gonna keep AMD's promise. Don't you worry, baby. You don't have to worry about AMD hurting you again. But obviously while we're waiting for Zen 3, I'm waiting for Zen 4, cause I already live in the future. And TSMC is expected to start mass production of the five nanometer plus node in Q4 of this year. That's a report coming out of DigiTime. So it's getting ready to go. I forgot my prop. Reese, could you go get the water cooler that's on the TV stand? And next is a product announcement. Thank you, Reese. Zadak announces their Spark AIO 250, 240 millimeter our addressable RGB liquid CPU cooler. We actually have one. Thank you, Zadak, for sending this over. There you go. It's announced. We obviously, it's still in the plastic. We haven't tested it yet, but Zadak entering into the mainstream cooling market with that. And Google entering into the no dumb market with announcing that Stadia will now support 1440p on Chrome, which makes sense. If you had 4K and you had 1080p, giving 1440p support makes sense. So thanks, Stadia, for doing Something obvious, I guess. And what's also obvious is that I love pink computer parts. I have none, but boy, do I wish I had more. And John's Bow is coming out with the CR1100 tower cooler that comes in bubblegum pink. And boy, howdy do I want one. $55, I'll take it. I'll take your entire stock. And you might want to take the stock of Razer's new updated Goliathus mouse pad, mouse mat, giant mouse, Pat, it's huge, it's a Gigantus. I said Goliathus, I was wrong, Gigantus. Anyways, the new Gigantus is big, potentially, and it has green underglow, but, which is different than the other one, which just had black, it has like black rubber. This one's green, so it's more visible. Speaking of visibility, there was none yesterday of the rocket. We drove two and a half hours to get to Cape Canaveral area. We socially distanced ourselves from everybody. We were the only people wearing masks out there, which, dang, I, that, was, that was weird. And then also, the worst part about it, not the fact that there was no rocket launch, that like, it's understandable they had to cancel it for weather, SpaceX couldn't go brr, get it. It was traffic getting out of there. That was like the worst concert traffic you could ever experience in your entire life. Two and a half hours to get there, it took us over five hours to get home. It's crazy. Anyways, SpaceX is gonna be retrying for the launch on this coming Saturday, May 30th at 3.22. Undecided whether or not I'm gonna go back. 
the traffic getting out of there was a nightmare. Oof. But let's talk about some other space stuff because in space, you don't have to deal with traffic because space, yeah. it's expansive. Truth, truth. And well, with how many satellites we're putting up there, you got traffic of space junk. Anyways, speaking of space junk, there was a company that went bankrupt, OneWeb. We talked about them recently in hot news. Well, they just applied to the FCC to get 48,000 satellites approved, even though they're working through bankruptcy. So they filed bankruptcy in March and then fired most of their staff, but now they're pursuing the sale of 48,000. I mean, they're not pursuing the sale. They're just asking for permission to launch more satellites. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the one episode of Seinfeld where George quits his job and then just turns up on Monday like he never actually quit. It's a beautiful episode. That's how one web feels. Oh, we're stopping! Just kidding. Give me more satellite permissions, please. And don't give permission to your kids to do anything. Ever. Okay? Crack down. I don't... Crack I, that's, down on kids? Yes. Crack. Kids need to stop. End of kids. I, this is not my parenting style. This is not how I do things. But that's how the segue needed to roll. So I went there. And Xbox is going to help you go there with your totalitarian parenting powers with the Xbox Family Settings app, which allows you to set limits on your kids' game time, as well as the games that they are able to play on the Xbox so that they don't accidentally stumble across your save of Leisure Sweet Larry. Oh, yeah. Reese. The app will be available sometime later this year. And speaking of app, Apple, they purchased in... <laughs> Sorry, Reese. <laughs> you didn't like that one. Apple bought Inductive, which is a company that uses AI to correct data. The thought that it might help Siri to be more efficient, Inductive, they didn't announce purchase price or what they're gonna be doing with Inductive, just the fact that they purchased them. Apple getting more involved in AI. And if you wanna look at a company that looks like it's run by an AI, and when I say AI, it's that kind of AI that people say is artificial intelligence, but really it's just a calculator putting in some numbers. There's no intelligence behind it. It's just some equations that don't fully comprehend the scope of what's actually there. You know, it's like, it's like Reese when he was two trying to sing. It's just horrendous. I have video evidence of this. It's not nice. What I'm talking about is obviously Quibi. I'm talking about Quibi because they announced that the iPhone can now use AirPlay to stream shows and freaking, man, Quibi can't do any freaking thing right. This is it. I hate it so much, okay? Quibi, obviously, a mobile first platform that doesn't allow you to take screenshots of their stuff to share it out on the internet so that you can promote their shows. No, they absolutely don't want that. But now that they have AirPlay, you wanna hear the most bass Ackerd's way of announcing it? How disconnected Quibi is that they had to announce AirPlay support like this. Like you would think, oh, we added AirPlay, here's a feature, just enjoy it, right? You, you would think it's just an app update. It's very, very inconsequential. Well, we've already seen Quibi doesn't do inconsequential very well because Jeffrey Katzenberg had that interview with the New York Times where he blamed the entire failure of their garbage app on the coronavirus, okay? Not the fact that they just suck and nobody wants to watch them and they have dumb ideas of how people use their phone. No, 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 no. It's the fact that coronavirus exists and people are spending more time on their phone. The fact that people are on their phone more is the reason why Quibi has failed. Yes, absolutely, 100% makes sense. Well, the announcement of AirPlay went with this tweet. Sure, we designed Quibi for on the go, but these days visiting the family room is like a day trip. So AirPlay support is live for iOS and Quibi 1.3. Working hard on Chromecast 2, which will be available in June. How on a touch do you have to be to announce AirPlay support like that? Sure, we didn't foresee the fact that people want to consume their content in many different platforms, so we only designed it for one, but now we realize that we're idiots and should have never done that in the first place? Maybe that would have been a more honest approach. Anyways, I've hated on Quibi so much in hot news. I hate it. I hate I hate the app. I hate the people who are running the app. Meg Whitman, the CEO of Quibi, was the CEO of HP when she destroyed the Palm brand, and I will never, ever forgive her for that. I, I mean, maybe we could be friends, but professionally, I hate her. I, and I cannot forgive her professional actions because Palm didn't need to die so young. I will, I will stand on... Anyway, she also basically tore apart eBay. That's neither here nor there. In case you want to know more about just how horrendous Quibi is, there's a great video from some more news. You can check it out right up there. Title of the video, we have to talk about Quibi, some more news. It gets into some stuff that I hadn't previously covered, like the fact that they basically, allegedly, but pretty much, but allegedly, ripped off an entire show from YouTube. 
the same name, same font, same choices, style, like the, they basically stole somebody else's work, allegedly. And then also the fact that they are getting around union policy by making their videos 10 minutes long, but they're actually producing feature films. But when it's 10 minutes long, you have to pay people less. And so that's allegedly what they're doing. Could be more shady than you think. If any of you have Quibi installed over your phones, I'll personally come over to you and I'll sprinkle some toe dust into the charging ports of your phone and make it so that you can't charge your phones ever again. And wireless charging? Don't worry, I'm gonna disable that too with armpit hairs, okay? It's gonna be a horrendous existence you're gonna live if you have Quibi on your phone. Don't don't be like that. Allegedly, I'll do all of this. Probably, I, like I can be in many places at once. I have this power. And I have the power to end this episode of Hot News because this went rogue on me. So when Quibi comes up, man, I just, I steer off, I, I steer into the skid and I just keep going with it. I don't, I don't play no games. Quibi, garbage app, and I will celebrate the day it dies. Like we will have a freaking party like you have never seen, which in case you want to catch us partying, twitch.tv forward slash UF Disciple, Hot News Live, best place to do it. We party there every day, but we would really have a shindig when Quibi dies. It's gonna be phenomenal. I'm gonna bust out the good hats. The good hats and the good drugs. Known as water. Water is the best drug. Why am I talking? Anyways, let's talk about today's video sponsor again. Big thanks again to manscaped.com for sponsoring today's video. Protect your meat kiwis, friends, with their lawnmower 3.0. Check it out at the link in the video description. Save 20% and get free shipping with the coupon code UFD Tech. Do it, my friends. You're beautiful people. Keep your broveries beautiful as well. That's the episode. We're done. Thank you so much for watching. I love you a lot. Bye. <laughs>